Hello, welcome to our third session on the story of Ruth. So I really hope you watch the puppet theatre video that tells the next part of Ruth. Because what you will notice in this part of Ruth is that nothing really exciting happens. Ruth carries on gleaning in Boaz's field. Ruth carries on going home and taking the grain home and making food with it. And Ruth carries on looking after Naomi, her mother-in-law and everything just carries on and stays the same. And that is the point in that sometimes in our lives, nothing feels like it's happening. It probably feels a little bit like that right now. Nothing much is happening. And actually that can be hard because some of you will be looking forward to um, new schools or new classes. Um, you might be thinking about seeing friends or new friends or just things that you're hoping to happen or waiting for things to get back to normal. And all of those things are fine and good. But it's hard to just be, isn't it? Just be. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I wish that I had a bit more of an exciting Bible-like lifestyle that, you know, maybe I could just rush out and slay a few giants like David or just be so brilliant to be on a boat on the water and see Jesus and him call me to get out and walk on the water with him. And I've always, always wanted to know what it was like being with Moses the night that the Israelites left Egypt and they couldn't cross the Red Sea, but Moses um, asked God and God parted the waves. And, and I just, you know, you sit in some kind of films and adaptations of the story, but the kind of the walls of water and the fish and just walking through, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? But there are lots and lots and lots of times in the Bible where people just did normal, everyday, probably slightly boring things. Just being, just being faithful to God and just trusting God. And I think that's what we need to do right now. Just remember to thank God for the things that we have got and just wait and trust him for whatever's gonna happen next. Do you remember last week um, in the story of Ruth, Boaz said to Ruth that um, she was sheltering under the wings of the Most High God. And that's what we're doing right now. We need to just shelter under the wings of God. There's a, another verse from the Bible that I found this morning in Deuteronomy. And it's where um, Moses knows that he's going to die. He's really old and he's passed on the leadership to Joshua. And he's sort of speaking his blessing over different tribes. And he says to the people, the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. So maybe now is the time to just take refuge in God and remember that his arms are everlasting and they're there holding you. So I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna do some painting because I promise that's what I would do this week. Lord, thank you so much that you are the everlasting God in who we can take refuge and you are holding us in your everlasting arms. And Lord, even if we feel a little bit like nothing's happening right now, help us to stay faithful to you because we know that you are faithful to us. Help us to trust you for whatever's going to happen next, Lord, and just be. Amen. So, I'm going to carry on thinking about that in the back of my mind, but while I'm thinking about it, I am going to do some fruit and vegetable printing because kind of harvest is a bit of a theme of Ruth because she's harvesting the grain. Now, I don't have any grain to harvest, 
In fact, I haven't harvested these myself, but I have been to the shops and I have got a um, grapefruit and apple, um, a lime and a potato. Now, what you will need to do with these fruits is you will need to ask an adult to cut them in half for you. But before you rush off and do that, it's really important, if you can remember, to cut your fruit in half, sort of across the middle, so that you've got a top and a bottom, and then you put it on its side, so the top of the apple, the bottom of the apple, put it on its side and cut through the core, because that gives you the best um, sort of cross section for a print. So. I'm going to cut my own fruit, but you need to ask an adult to do this for you. Sharp knives. Okay, so I'm going to cut my apple. And inside, you should have that lovely little kind of flower pattern. So I'm just going to use one to start with because I don't want to get all my fruit covered in um, paint if I don't have to. Okay, so um, I've gone for two citrus fruits, one large, one small, because they tend to print really well. So again, make sure you've got the top of the grapefruit or whatever you're using, the bottom, turn it on its side and cut through the middle like that. Oh, this is nice and juicy. Oh, that is beautiful. Do you know, grapefruit's quite a sharp fruit but it's so hot right now, I feel like I could just lick it. Mm, I won't. Okay, I'll put that one to one side. Maybe Mark will have that for breakfast tomorrow. Um, put the other one there. Okay, so lime again. I don't know which is top and which is bottom, but top bobble, bottom bobble, light on its side. Um, you might notice this one looks a bit brown and horrible, but I thought if I'm going to paint with it, I might as well choose one that doesn't look so nice. There we go, cut that in half. Okay. Oh, that smells good. Mmm. There we are. So very similar to the grapefruit, just smaller. And then finally, I'm going to cut my potato in half. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was very little at school, potato printing was a really big thing. So again, cut your potato in half so that you've got two nice little wedges. And if you have a very clever adult, they might be able to cut a design for you. But I have never been able to do that. Whenever I cut designs, it looks terrible. So I'm going to cut just a crisscross pattern to see if that has any effect on my painting. There we go. So I've done squares on that one. Might not make any difference. And um, I can't do wiggly lines. I'm going to do horizontal on that one okay right okay that's done got my fruit wedges cut the next thing you will need is you will need some paint uh, paper to print on now I've chosen a black piece of paper and a sort of very pale creamy color because I want to see which background my fruit looks best on and then I've also squirted out some paint into some tubs. So I've got green, blue, red, yellow. I've only got a little bit. I haven't got a lot of paint from um, some little tubes. So hopefully it'll be enough. And you need a paintbrush. Ta-da! And it might be an idea to have um, a cup of water to wash your paintbrush in. And as always, you want your trusty kitchen roll or cloth for those spills that could happen. All right, I am going to go for the apple first and um, I am going to paint, oh it's got a sticker on, I'm going to paint my apple, let's have a look, I'm going to paint my apple red, why not? So. Now, this is acrylic paint, so it might not work as well as poster paint, which is um, usually the sort of paint that they sell in um, 
craft shops for children. So we'll see. Okay, so there we are. I've coated the base in red. So let's have a look at the print on the creamy paper. So gently put it down and press it without smearing it round. If you smear it, you'll lose any of the um, pattern. And very gently peel it off without smearing. Oh, okay, well, not amazing. There we go. Looks more like a big splodge. Let's see if I can get a better print. Let's try on the black paper this time. Okay, I'm gonna try and press down a bit more in the middle. I think I was trying hard not to smear. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, that looks interesting. Let me just hold it up for you. Can you see it? Okay. All right, I'm actually going to do a row of these. There we go. In fact, you get a slightly better print when there's not so much paint on it. Those of you that are painting experts will be going, oh, didn't you know that? There we go. Right, what shall we do next? Shall we go for the line? Yes, I can hear you say. Right, I'm going to wash my brush a bit. And then I'm going to wipe it on some tissue paper to sort of dry it and clean it. Okay, let's go for the line and I'm going to do the lime green. Is that a bit boring? No, I'll do it green. Okay, so there we are. Now that is weird because a lime is green anyway, but this is a totally different green. Right, okay. Ta da! Let's have a go at this one. Print. Oh. Print. Okay, that's come out quite nicely. Can you see again that less paint has made a better print? Let's see if it shows up on the black. I've got some white paint that might show up nicely. I'll try that later. Hmm. Can't see it so well. In fact, we can't see it at all. Okay, now I'm going fairly quickly through this because obviously I don't want you all to sort of start going to sleep with utter boredom watching me paint. Um, I am definitely going to do the grapefruit blue. Um, so I'm not going to wash my brush because I think the blue can cope with a bit of green. So here we go. It's very, it feels very wrong painting a grapefruit blue. Just painting a grapefruit. Okay, I'm quite excited about this. Give it a go. Splodge. Beautiful. And again. Oh, it's so juicy. Juicy, loosey. Mmm. Okay, that is really satisfying. I might just have to do a whole page of grapefruit printing. All right, I don't think it's going to show up at all blue paint on a black it looks um it looks good it looks interesting but you can't see it very clearly oh i'll show you there we go all right so finally i'm going to see what's happened to my potatoes i'm just going to wash the blue off Give that a wipe on my tissue. Okay, let's try yellow on my first potato half. Oh, I'm not sure if those squares are gonna show up. Let me see. Right, probably won't show up on this one so well. Let's have a go. Bad. There we go. See that? 
can't really see the squares, can you? Right, let's have a go on the black. Hopefully this should show up better. Mm. Not really. Interesting experiment. I thought the yellow would really stand out. Maybe I need more paint. Shall I try it with a bit more paint? Yes, that's better. Oh, and you can see the squares. That's good. Okay. So, final one. I'm going to try my diagonally cut potato. And I think I'm going to go back to the red. Except it'll probably go orange because I've got a bit of a yellow on. There we are. Oh, yes, quite smeary. Okay, let's try that around the edge here. Hmm. Well, not a resounding success. But you know what? Really quite fun. I think you can see that I'm not terribly artistic because I've just done sort of straight lines. It pleases me to have straight lines of methodical colours, but I'm sure you would do the most amazing pictures. See you soon. Bye-bye.